Growing economies need accessible electricity, and in Africa, it's not always easy. One Rwandan innovator doesn't see the lack of available power as a problem. He sees it as an opportunity. Mugitanga is a rural village in the Burera district of Rwanda. The surrounding areas are well-known tourist hotspots. The natural beauty and gorilla population are major attractions. But Mugitanga remains relatively cut off. The nearest town is over 45 minutes walk away and there are no facilities like electricity. People here rely on mobile phones in order to connect with the outside world. But with no electricity, they have to make the long journey into town for a single mobile charge. Three months ago, Emelaine Dahimana bought into a brand new franchise that has changed everything. Every day, he wheels his air red kiosk into the center of the village. It's a solar-powered store that can charge cell phones and other small electronic devices. MLA charges a fee for the service, and after just three months, his business is booming. So this is the solar kiosk? Absolutely, this is the mobile solar kiosk. As you can see, it uh, gives you a different option on the inside. The A-Red solar kiosk and the franchise model were invented by Henry Nyakarundi from Rwanda. One thing I knew was uh, the lack of electricity was a big problem in the region, in Rwanda included. So uh, solar technology is one of the best technology to uh, fight or to solve that issue. 60% of the population has a cell phone, but less than 15% have access to electricity. So that was the initial idea. Henry grew up in Burundi, but left as a student for the USA with his sister during the war in the early 90s. But he was constantly drawn back to Africa. There's no doubt in my mind that the future is here. When I moved back here, I packed up my bag. There was nothing left for me in the States. You wouldn't pay me to go back there, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm serious. I started seeing the opportunity when I was on vacation here. And then that's when the idea was like, okay, something is going on here, and I want to be part of it. <laughs> I started seeing people, more and more people with cell phones, but they were having a lot of problem charging their cell phone, including myself. At that time, I had a BlackBerry, a smartphone, so I had to go home, charge my phone, go back to the city. I was like, man, it would be cool to have a, a, a kiosk in a city where you can just charge it. So I did some research, I went online, and I look at energy, I was like, wow, you know, you look at the statistic here, less than 20% of the population has access to electricity in the region. It's even worse in some areas, you know? So I knew this is where I want to be in. So how many cell phones would you be able to charge at a time? So we can charge both sides, about up to 30 phones at one time. Uh, as you can tell, we do every, all the charge are done USB uh, port only. We have universal plugs, so we can charge up to 90% different type of uh, phone uh, that exists in the world. And uh, you can see on the lights here, the green lights tells you when it's charging, when it's not. Mm. So you can turn that on, turn that off. Okay. And the control panel gives you the battery life. We want to make it as easy as possible to move it around. Yes. Uh, so the, the, the whole body is a plastic uh, mm. base mold. From the frame to the, to the body, mm. the only thing metal is the, is the body frame. Yeah, you can definitely see that the plastic makes it quite easy to move around, maneuver, it's light. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, there's a lock system. You can actually lock the system. A lot of time, if they want to go eat, uh, they want to move away from the kiosk, so nobody steals the phones. If it's a rainy day or cloudy day, you don't have much sun, would you be able to go with the power of the battery for the entire day? Absolutely. So we're using uh, the lithium uh, type of batteries, which is the best battery in the market right now. The, the goal is to charge everything during the day from the solar panel. Mm. But the system automatically kicks in uh, using the battery if there's cloud, 
right. if it's raining or at night, you know, it automatically does it uh, from the system. It could rain for two days, the battery will still be working because I wanted to create a, a full business solution for our franchisee where they can really earn a living off this particular business. Mm. <laughs> you know, what we're trying to really do is if you come to a kiosk in rural area or, or in the city, it's the same service, same quality service, same product, you know, a uniform distribution channel. What would Emile have had to do to buy into the business? So the franchise business on, on this version, particular version, was uh, $700, which include training. We teach them about marketing, business model, taxes, etc. What he also does on top of charging, uh, he can sell airtime. He has a POS system to sell electricity, which his partner does to the closest city where there's electricity. So it seems like Emile already has quite a few customers. Do you want to maybe get more kiosks in the future? Eh, kuko kujira ngo nza zimba shaka kubona na telefoni, chaji nish, chaji nishi, kujira kubera hano haba wachira chani. Henry now has 24 franchisees operating across Rwanda. So why franchise? Very simple. You know, a lot of time, you see a lot of people that want to be in business for themselves, but they don't want to be in business by themselves. When you look at statistics, franchise business model has a higher rate of success than traditional business. 80% of franchisees succeed, and 80% of traditional business fail. And we'll still have a lot of challenges. I mean. Uh, now we, we're still small, so it's easy to monitor, but how do you monitor two, three, four hundred kiosks? So now we're developing a software technology that will be built in in the kiosk so we can communicate with the kiosk and be able to know where the kiosks are, troubleshoot the kiosk remotely, and we work on the next generation kiosk where we'll be offering internet services. We're in a great space now because especially in Rwanda, they're really promoting entrepreneurship, but I think it's very early stage. You know, because you can always have great ideas, problem solving, but without financing, you can't move from point A to point B. I mean, that's just the name of the game. Great ideas get stuck because there's no funding. You know, I see it all the time. Now we have to move beyond entrepreneurship also and create a real structure to support those entrepreneurs, to get them to the next level.